All right, Proxmox 7 has been released a couple weeks ago, somewhere in there. And from what I'm hearing, all the cool kids are upgrading from 6 to Proxmox 7. So I thought to myself, self, you want to be a cool kid? Sure, why not? Let's be a cool kid. So let's go ahead and upgrade from Proxmox 6 to Proxmox 7 and all become cool kids next on Low Res DIY. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go and download the Proxmox installer. And this is just a precautionary measure. And just in case the upgrade doesn't go as planned, you'll be able to fall back on this and reinstall and install Proxmox from the beginning. So the website's here, you just click on download, it'll download it for you. I've already done this. And uh, once you get that done, you want to follow it up by going to your uh, Proxmox machine, the one you're going to update, and you're gonna want to do a backup on all your containers and all your uh, virtual machines. So go to your data center, click on backup. If you haven't done it already, start a backup and just uh, have it run now. So the big thing about this is you need to make sure you store this backup on an external hard drive or on a NAS or on your desktop, not on the machine that you're upgrading. Because if some, again, if something goes wrong, you'll be able to use these backups to get your containers and virtual machines back up and running. So once those two things are complete, we should be good to go. Now the nice people at Proxmox, they've set a website up with all the instructions that you need to, uh, do the upgrade. Uh, I'll have a link to this in the description. Also, feel free to read through it at your leisure. We're not going to go through it line by line, but there are a couple things that uh, I want to hit on real quick. First, uh, well, the backups were one thing and downloading the uh, ISO, but the other thing is this right here. And, and what it's saying is if you are virtually hosting your machine somewhere else, say you got to have it in the cloud somewhere, your Mac address for that machine will change, which will affect your IP address and everything else. So you just need to be aware of that. So if, if you have that situation, I would go ahead and read this, fully understand it myself. I'm uh, running it local off of a server here at my house, so I'm, I'm not even concerned about that. And we'll get started with this. One of the things they say is you do not want to run this in the GUI shell because eventually it's going to be disabled to you and you won't be able to see what's going on. So I'm going to run this in a uh, SSH session that I've started in PuTTY, but almost forgot something. Before we do that, we need to go ahead and close or shut down all our containers and virtual machines. All right, now that that's done, let's go ahead and jump in the putty. And I'm just going to pull my instructions out here. And we're just going to copy and paste back and forth, make life easy. And the first thing we're going to do is this right here. We're going to copy this command over, which is going to check your machine, make sure you're ready to do the update. So we'll go ahead and click that. And 23 tests, 18 pass, two skipped, three warnings, load to configure, mount. Okay, so the mount points that I had set up, nothing we're going to worry about right now. Uh, and the next thing we're going to want to do is run an apt update and an apt upgrade just to make sure we're on the latest version of Proxmox 6. Looks like we were. So the next step is to update our Debian repositories because it's going to be changing to Bullseye from Buster. And we'll hit enter and that'll happen. And then we need to ensure that all the Proxmox 6, 6 repositories are disabled. And to do that, we're going to jump into these files right here. We're just going to nano into them. And we're going to make sure there's nothing in here that says Proxmox 6, which, nope, nothing there. So we can control X out of that. And then we want to check this file also. 
and everything says bullseye the way it should. Now, if it doesn't, uh, if you still have stuff there from, from uh, six, all you need to do is go to whatever line that is and give it a hashtag and a space, and that'll comment it out so that the, the uh, system will just ignore that line. So let's control X. I don't want to save anything there. Next up, we want to add the Proxmox 7 package repository with this long command right here provided I can click on the whole thing. All right, so that has been added. And if you're running Ceph, which I am not, you wanna run this command also. So do that if you need to. I'm not, so I'm not gonna do it. And let's do the apt update, followed by the apt upgrade. All right, once you press yes, this thing's gonna start updating to Proxmox 7. And it, it's gonna take a little while to do it. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, there's going to be a few prompts that are going to come up and, and it's going to ask you about myself. I'm just going to stick with the defaults on it. You do you. I'm going to just, like I said, stick with the defaults on everything and uh, basically cross my fingers and hope for the best. Hopefully I won't have to use that ISO that we downloaded earlier. But while you're sitting around waiting for this to happen and everything, you might as well go ahead, scroll down, click on that subscribe button, click on that like button, help me out a little bit, you know, hey, didn't cost nothing. Okay, here's the first little prompt uh, coming up. All it's doing is it's telling you that you are attempting to upgrade from Proxmox 6.4-1 to Proxmox 7. If you want to do this, go ahead and hit enter to continue or C to abort. Well, we want to do it, so we're going to hit enter. Okay, here is the first of the options. And it says a uh, package distributor has shipped an updated version. What would you like to do about it? The defaults in, which is just keep your current version. That's what I'm going to go with. So I'm going to hit enter. Okay. This option is telling you that, uh, you can have it start the services for you when it, re when the, when the Proxmox machine restarts the, uh, Default is no. I'm just going to stick with no. They're all off now. I'll start them up when once I'm sure everything's up and running. Okay, this is just saying that certain services need to be restarted. Okay, go ahead and do them. We'll hit enter again. Now again, this is just telling you that certain services need to be restarted for Pam. Okay, go ahead and do it. All right, it's uh, future me here because past me is a chowderhead and he doesn't know how to push the mute button on the mic and unmute the mic. I mean, come on, look at this guy. He's talking away. Nothing's happening though, doesn't even realize it. So anyway, I just wanted to jump back in and let you know that this window and there's gonna be another one that pops up just after it they are just telling you that there's new versions of a certain file that I had edited and it asked me if I wanted to keep the version that I already have or if I wanted to uh, change it to the old one. So I just kept the one I had because I'm not sure what exactly I had changed in it. So, all right, that's all. Back to past me. All right, it looks like we're done. So let's uh, have a look. Proxmox 6.413, we do a refresh and there we go, Proxmox 7, done and done. All right, we were able to uh, upgrade from Proxmox 6 to Proxmox 7. Hey, we're a bunch of cool kids now. You feel like a cool kid? I feel like a cool kid. So until next time, I hope this video helped you out. Do me a favor, scroll down, hit that like and subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you next time.